Welcome, welcome back. Today we're going to continue our talk on gene expression, specifically looking at something called pre-mRNA processing. So, as always, let's get to it. If you have been keeping up with these lessons, then th this slide should be quite familiar to you. An overview of the steps of gene expression. We already talked about chromatin remodeling and finished transcription last time. So today we're going to take a closer look at the RNA transcript. The RNA transcript produced from transcription has a specific name. It's called messenger RNA. And let me write that down. Messenger RNA. Because it's going to serve as a template or message for protein production later on uh, during translation. And messenger RNA is often abbreviated as mRNA. However, in order for mRNA to be, well, mRNA, it has to undergo several mod modifications and changes. Indeed, before acquiring these changes, the RNA is called pre-mRNA or pre-messenger RNA. So this is the initial state and it must go through modifications in order for it to become mRNA. So how does pre-mRNA become mRNA? Well, there are three major modifications it must go through, including 5' prime capping, 3' prime polyadenylation, and splicing. Now, in our previous lesson, we briefly talked about 5' prime capping and 3' prime polyadenylation. And so we're going to look we're going to look into them a bit more today. And uh, splicing is something we haven't discussed yet, but we will today. So let's take a closer look at the 5' prime cap structure. Here we have the 5' prime end of an RNA transcript. <clears throat> and so here we just see, you know, the uh, the ribose and here we have the bases and connected connecting them are these phosphate groups. And so this is the 5 prime end because this here is the 5 prime uh, position. And um, to the blue, to the left side over here, we have the cap. Now specifically this is called the this 5 prime cap is called the 7 methyl uh, M E T H Y L uh, guanosine cap. And it's often abbreviated as M superscript 7 then G. And if we look at this cap structure and we look at this first phosphate group, so we look at this entire structure in the in, in its um, in, well in its entirety, it's basically a nucleotide. This is guanine or just G, right? Um, so we can say that this nucleotide or this cap structure is uh, methylated, very important, it's methylated at the seventh position. That's why it's called the 7 methyl guanosine cap. That's why we have this prefix of 7 methyl. Also of note is that there are these three phosphate groups bridging the gap between the 5 prime end of the RNA and the cap structure. And this is an unusual connection because this is a 5 prime, so this, this will also this will be the 5 prime um, position on uh, at over here at the cap. So this will be a this is a 5 prime to 5 prime connection, which is very unusual. Um, because normally we have 5 prime ends connecting to 3 prime ends shown you know in, in during when we make RNA so this is 5 prime so this is the 3 prime position here we have a 5 prime um, so so then here we have the uh, the 3 prime and then we have the 5 prime and then we have you know the 3 prime here here so this is how um, RNA is made right from this uh, 5 prime to 3 prime direction like this so this 5 prime to 5 prime connection is 
It's very unusual. Lastly, and this isn't always the case, but often the first two nucleotides at the 5' prime end of the RNA are also uh, methylated at the second position in the ribose. So this here will be the second position. And as you can see, we have a, a methylation event occurring at these first two nucleotides. Now this doesn't always happen, but it's, it's pretty common. Now, don't worry about the exact mechanism of all of this, of how this all goes down. Because I just want you to understand the big picture for now. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, one last thing I want to mention is that the capping process occurs co-transcriptionally. Which means it happens during transcription. Because usually as soon as the 5 prime N emerges um, during the transcription process, the whole entire capping process begins. Next, let's take a look at 3' polyadenylation. Here we have an RNA transcript, or I should um, really just say it's um, pre-mRNA. Pre Let me just write that down again, pre-mRNA. And here, of course, at the 5' prime end, we have the 5' prime cap, in which we just talked about. And uh, this uh, methyl group here just indicates um, the methylation at the seventh position, very important. At the other end of things, at the other end of things, um, we have a polyadenylation event. Now we talked about this last week about how proteins recognize um, the polyadenylation signal or sequence near the three prime end of the RNA transcript. And this causes the recruitment of other proteins to this area and causes a cleavage event or a cutting event to occur. And once this RNA is cut at the three prime, um, near the three prime end, at the three prime end, a uh, string of adenines or A's are added to the, to the, to the very end. And so this, strings, this string of A's, of adenines, it's called the poly A tail. This stretch of A's is not five or 10 bases. It's actually fairly lengthy, ranging up to a couple, a few hundred, um, a few hundred bases in length. But what's the purpose of these modifications? Why do we have a five prime cap and why do we have a three prime tail? Well, they serve several, several purposes, ranging from Pre preventing RNA from being degraded, it stabilizes the RNA, um, helping in transcription termination, controlling the um, nuclear export of the RNA. Remember, transcription happens in a nucleus. In order for translation to occur, the RNA must be exported out into the cytoplasm. And speaking about translation, even these modifications helps with uh, driving translation later. So let me just write that stuff down. Um, it helps uh, helps with uh, preventing RNA degradation. Degradation it helps with uh, transcription termination. It assists in nuclear export and also helps with uh, driving translation, which we haven't talked about. And uh, this is, of course, we will be talking about this later on. The third major modification that pre mRNA must undergo in order for it to become fully mature mRNA it's called splicing. Now splicing can be very complicated and so let's just look at the overall picture. You see in pre-mRNA in pre-mRNA we have regions, uh, sequences in the transcript called exons and introns. Introns are sequences that are not part of the gene. That is, they are not used to make protein. And exons, 
Exons are sequences that are used during translation, creating protein. And so the introns must be spliced. They must be spliced out, hence the name splicing. And exons must be joined together. Once that happens, we have fully mature mRNA that's ready for translation in order to create protein. Oh yeah, right. Don't forget at the five prime end we have the five prime cap, and of course at the three prime end um, we have the uh, three prime uh, poly A tail. And this is what we have. This is what we call mature mRNA, or just mRNA. Now, like I said before, splicing can be very complicated depending on how many exons and introns you have and where they're positioned in a transcript. And in order for splicing to occur, a protein complex, a protein complex called the spliceosome is involved, and also the small RNA molecules called um, snRNA or small nuclear RNA. But uh, again, I really don't want to get into that right now. Just don't worry about it. Just understand the overall purpose of pre-mRNA splicing. Getting rid of the introns and joining together the, uh, the exons. Let's go over what we talked about today. We learned that RNA transcript, the RNA transcript made during transcription is called pre-mRNA. The M stands for messenger. And over time, it matures into mRNA after acquiring several modifications. The three major modifications um, during this process of, of acquiring these modifications is called pre-mRNA processing. And the three major modifications are five prime, um, five prime, uh, are five prime capping, the three prime polydenylation, or adding the three prime tail, and splicing. Now, adding this 7 methyl guanosine cap and this poly A tail, which is around um, 200 adenines at the 3 prime end of the RNA, um, helps stabilize the RNA, um, preventing it from uh, degradation. It helps with export out of the nucleus in preparation for translation and among other functions. But of course, before it can be exported, it must undergo splicing. Uh, which is removing, uh, removing the introns and joining together the exons. And after that, in, after that we then have uh, proper mature mRNA ready for translation. Next time we'll talk about translation, the final step of gene expression. Well, it's technically a pseudo final step and I'll explain that later. And that'll do it for today. As always, thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you next time.